So, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. Kalidasa is uh, one of my favorite uh, authors, Sanskrit writers, and uh, uh, any any day, you know, to talk on Kalidasa is a pleasure. And that to Kalidasa and Indian aesthetics, which is called as Saundarya Shastra in Sanskrit, uh, this is really, I feel my privilege to talk on this, this topic today. So let us first see what aesthetics means, right? So aesthetics is, uh, in you know, in Western philosophy, aesthetics becomes a part and parcel of the different categories of uh, philosophy, like they have ontology, epistemology, metaphysics, axiology, and aesthetics. Like that, it is not a system, uh, an independent system of Indian thinking. It is not a sub topic under philosophy as such. Nonetheless, you know, it is the divine bliss or the light, uh, the delight, the light which leads you to, or the delight which uh, leads you to the supreme light, that is the samam bonam, which is the ananda, rasa in poetics, ananda, uh, which is equated with moksha, you know, in Vedanta. So in Indian ethos, basically, this philosophy culminates into poetry. And therefore, this rasa and ananda and saundarya, they are all part and parcel of philosophical thinking. Now, what is the aim of philosophy per se? It is, you know, dukkha nivarana and sukha avakti. So to get rid of our pain and suffering, you know, all the sorrows and get away from the bondage of this world, and uh, get to moksha, get liberated, get moksha, nivritti or nirvana or apavraga or mukti, moksha, variously it is called so. And aesthetics, Saundarya Shastra, it helps in a way to reach us that stage and liberate us from our sorrows. In fact, it has the ability to convert our pain into pleasure, our suffering into peace our poison of the this bhavasagara this empirical world into the divine nectar and the mundane life into the divine realm so aesthetics has that much potential uh, with which it can transcend us to a different realm altogether and thus i feel aesthetics and philosophy are closely interlinked though uh, like western philosophy it is not a part of Indian philosophy. Aesthetics is the science of beauty. It is aestheticos, so it is the science, but that sci to learn that science, you must learn the art of uh, being a connoisseur. So it's very subjective. You know, it, it requires uh, an emotional quotient, an emotional judgment. You have to be a rasikar. Rasika, rasam janati, rasam vetti, iti rasikaha. And therefore, uh, you, you, need a ras you need to be a rasika. And, uh, why, and what can take a rasika you know, away from this world to the other world, it transcends him to the other realm, is the mere and sheer beauty of the creativity of the composition. The composition may be a literary composition, a poetic composition, a dance performance, you know, a concert or a beautiful sculpture, a beautiful construction, a building, a temple, anything, you know. It takes us immediately by sheer beauty to the other world. So that creativity is the major part in uh, tapping one's aesthetic uh, perspective. Poets and dramatists are the most creative people with an eye on aesthetics and therefore we must know what this saundarya really means. So aesthetics, as I said, it is called as saundarya shastra. So what is saundarya basically? It is sundara, sundarasya bhavaha saundaryam. Whatever belongs to sundara, beautiful, 
that is saundarya, that is beauty. And this could be derived from two different uh, uh, verbs in Sanskrit. It, Sanskrit is a very, very, you know, methodological, a derivative language where all the words can be derived from the roots. So, su plus drung adare. Adar shabda ka hum prayog karte hai na? Usme bhi drung adare yahi root hai. A plus dru, adar karna, samman karna, to revere, to respect. So, su plus drung. Su adriyate iti. So, that which is respected, that which is highly regarded, that is sundar. Okay? Another and very beautiful explanation is su is a upasarga, it's a prefix. Su means good, you know, su manas. Huh? So, su is good. Su plus undi kledane. Unda is the root. This is the root <coughs> which is found in the word samudra. Sam. Undayati, klinati, iti, some, it wets us, it moistens us, you know. You go and stand at the beach of the ocean and how you get, you know, the, the tusharas. So, su unatti, shobhanam, sushtu, unatti, unatti namakim, chittam dravi karoti, which melts our heart. So, that which melts our heart is sundara. It is not just a physical beauty of a thing, but that which attracts our attention, that is called sundara. So anything which is charming, which is lovable, which is covetable, which is attractive, which is able to melt our heart, that is sundara. That is sundara. And ra is a possessive suffix. Like ruchi, ra. Like sundara. So ra is a possessive suffix. So the thing which possesses that ability to melt one's heart, that is Sundara. Such a nice derivation, you know. It gives you all, I mean, in one single word, it has, it contains so much of meaning, you know. It's loaded with meaning. So this is something like aha moment in one's life. Oh, wow. Wow, we say. What a thing. Wow. Aha. You know. So wah, kya baat hai. So that moment, that is Sundara in the, in the today's terminology. Now, this is this leads us to rasa. Gradually, we are coming to rasa. So, one should know the theory of literary uh, criticism or art criticism and should have the ability and sensitivity to, to, to be one with that experience, you know. So, that experiential truth, if a person is not able to experience that, then he can't really relish. So that rasa can approach only one person, that person who really is sensitive enough and who knows something, some little bit of the literary art or literary criticism, art criticism. So here the role of uh, the connoisseur. Artist is the composer who has uh, composed certain thing, a literary piece or a dance or a music or a sculpture or a whatever. That is the art. And here is the rasika. So the, the kriti and the rasika, the rasa, rasika and the, the composition, all three have to be one with each other. And therefore, you know, Abhinava Gupta, while commenting on Bharata's Nakti Shastra, Rasa Sutra, he says, how a person should develop that sensitivity and that capacity to relish. Yesham kavyanushilana abhyasa vashad vishadi bhute mano mukure varnani tanmayi bhavana yogyata te rhidaya samvada bhajaha sa rhidayaha. In a nutshell, I give you the meaning, not decoding every word. So, those who can become one with the experience which they are going to experience, and that oneness which they see is capaciated is facilitated in them because of their constant study of literary works. Kavya Anushilana Abhyasa. If you are not reading literature, reading poetry, how can you relish it? Right? So take a piece of poetry and immediately that moment will come to you. It's not possible. So you there must be some abhyasa and then only you can uh, really empathize with what the writer has to say.
So this rasa is rasyate aswadyate iti rasa. Uh, this is basically sru sarati. It has become like uh, varana vipariyaya, the transposition of the letters. The sara becomes rasa. Like ki matbal hai. It is matlab. And we say matbal, you know, in Punjabi. So really like that only. So rasa is ananda which is equated with Brahmananda Sahodara, which is called as Brahmananda. And uh, whatever the literary artist, now here we are taking into consideration Kalidasa, so literary composition, whatever he writes, that plot is the body, but what is the soul? That is rasa. And that rasa, one, it has to touch the heart of the rasika, the kanaishya. Okay. So this, uh, I'll just skip over this because, you know, I want to do Kalidasa more than the theoretical part of it. But then, uh, as Aravindo rightly said once, that uh, nations are made by artists and poets and not by traders and politicians. It's so very true, right? Uh, no traders and politicians are remembered, but Kalidasa and Bhasa and Vyas and Valmiki are remembered, even after millennia. So, and this, this is a gift of India to the entire world. Like dharma is a gift. Like Brahma is a gift in Satya. Dharma is a gift in Shivam. Rasa is a gift in Sundaram. So Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram is in Indian ethos. And these three aspects, Brahman, uh, Dharma and Sundara or uh, Rasa, they represent the Satya, Shiva and Sundara, the three aspects of uh, Indian ethos. And this is like what, how can the research develop? How can a poetry, a literary piece of, uh, literary piece can come into existence? It's a powerful uh, emotions, you know, outburst of uh, powerful emotions, spontaneous outburst of powerful emotions. That's what Wordsworth defined it. And this is called Udana in Pali. It is like Preeti Vega Samuthitaha, you know, a jar is filled with water, it is overfilled. What, what, what is the effect thereafter? It gets overfilled and it gets overflowed. Similarly, when our heart becomes filled with emotions, those emotions come forward. They get is born. So then the poetry is born. So Valmiki's Ramayana got like this, you know. When Valmiki saw one of the Pramcha Mithuna being shot at by a hunter, you know, Anayasa, you know, uske mukse shakuvani nikala imanishada pratishtham pamagamashashwati samaha. And that is the origin of poetry. And therefore, Ramayana is called Adikavya, Valmiki is called Adikavi. That's what we say. Now coming to the topic straight way, this with this prologue of aesthetics, how we can, uh, I mean, like a connoisseur in the role of a connoisseur, how we can relish it under what different, different genres, under which different heads. So I have tried to make some headings of that. Of course, it comes all as a cumulative effect many a times, but still uh, individually also I have picked some examples as illustrations. So there could be Saundarya in the plot, the plot, the itivritta, the katha, the narrative which the uh, poet had chosen, that itself is so nice, you know. So there is Saundarya in that and how he develops it from the original source material, uh, how he develops it into a poetic piece, a masterpiece, We'll see the example of Shakuntala shortly. Then Saundarya in the characters, Patra Saundarya, it could be Shakuntala, it could be Urvashi, it could be Yakshapatni, Tanvishyama, Shikhari Dashana, etc. Or it could be the king, Dushanta, it could be Shiva in Kumara Sambhava. You know, there are so many Patra Saundaryas, the beauty in the characters, Alankara Saundarya, the Saundarya in the figures of speech, then Saundarya in the sentiments and Bhava and Dhani, the suggestive power. Then Prakritika, the natural descriptions, the landscape, etc. And Vichara, the lofty thoughts and concepts. All these could entice and encapsulate and, you know, uh, attract the minds of a connoisseur. 
So coming to Vastu Saundarya, beauty in the plot construction. The very theme of Mekhaduta, for example, is very unique. A cloud being sent as a messenger. Nobody would ever have thought of that because cloud is an inanimate object. In Ramayana, we have the uh, Dautya of Hanumat Dautyam, Hanuman being sent by Rama to Sita as an ambassador, as a Duta. But Hanuman is a living person. Here, Megha is, you know, Dumat Jyotis Salila Marutam Sannipata. It's an inanimate assemblage, you know, of water vapor and, uh, and dust particles brought together by the blowing wind and all that. So thinking of that as a messenger, that itself is so unique. And then personify that cloud. Personify that cloud as a friend. As if he is a friend of Yaksu, you know. So this is really very charming. Uh, that is one part. Then say for, uh, take for example Shakuntala, the story Shakuntalo Pakhyana is written by Vyasa in Adiparva of Mahabharata, but that comes as a very rudimental, very raw uh, sort of uh, narration uh, that once Dushanta went and uh, he fell in love with uh, Shakuntala, he married her and then he went back and then he forgot her conveniently. He conveniently forgot her. Okay. And uh, Shakuntala delivers a baby child, Bharata, and he becomes eight years old. And then she comes to the court of uh, King Dushanta and who denies having married. You know, it's a very uh, raw sort of uh, thing. And uh, I mean, Dushanta, the character as such, uh, the power of a king, you know, he doesn't have any sympathy from the reader. Vyasa's Dushanta. And Shakuntala also, she falls an easy prey to uh, Dushanta's charms and all that, you know. She also doesn't uh, captivate our minds, but Kalidas uh, has, it ha he has given a midas touch to the entire narrative and the story comes in a very beautiful form. He introduces so many devices like the Dushanta giving her a ring, which she, uh, which is lost inadvertently, you know. And there is a curse by Durvasa, uh, whom she did not attend because she is lost and engrossed in the thoughts of Dushanta. That becomes so very natural for a young, bashful maiden that, you know, uh, she just, you know, she is khoi khoi si hai apne khayalon mein and therefore she doesn't take note of the uh, angry Durvasas who curses her. That becomes so very natural. And the ring, you know, it's a male ring. How can it fit in the uh, very delicate fingers of Shakuntala? It might have slipped up. That's also quite natural. And because the ring is not there, Dushanta doesn't remember her. So for Dushanta also, the readers have some sympathy. So the whole story is built as a very masterpiece of narrative. Uh, Vyasa's uh, Mahabhar in the Mahabharata Katha, Shakuntala is very, very rudimentary uh, plot, but he has given, Kalidasa with his Pratibha has given it a very refined touch. Same case is there with the Purvashi Katha. In uh, Rugveda, we have Ururava, Pururava Urvashi, Samvada Sukta, dialogue him. And uh, that I'm going to deal with in the Samvada Suktas anyhow. So that uh, narrative is given in the Shatapatha Brahmana later on. But that is also very prosaic matter. But when Kalidasa touches it and creates a wonderful drama like Vikram Urvashiyam, he gives, you know, he takes Urvashiya to a different plane altogether. So this is how the plot could be made more beautiful so that people can enjoy, can relish it. So coming to Urvashi, because Urvashi is a very beautiful character he has uh, portrayed. Uh, she is Apsara, by the way, and uh, Apsara is a celestial nymph, a celestial damsel, and she's been praised by Ramtha, one of the very famous Apsaras in the Indraloka, as Sukumaram Praharanam Mahendrasya. She is as if a, a weapon in the hand of Indra. But this weapon is not, uh, you know, very harsh like Vajra, like Kulisha. It is Sukumaram, so delicate, so tender. 
a tender weapon in the heart of Mahendra, Indra. Pratyadeshaha, Rupa Garibitaya, Shriyaha. And she is as if, you know, she gives an inferiority complex to Sakshat Lakshmi, who is very proud of her own beauty. Rupa Garibita Shri, you know, but she gives, Urvashi gives a complex even to Lakshmi. So that is how Rambha has described her. And uh, Rabindranath Tagore has written a very long poem on Urvashi. A couplet from that I am tempted to uh, recite here. Neither a mother nor a daughter, nor even a wife in an earthly home. O oh, fair Urvashi, you are a denizen of heaven, drawing a golden veil. You know, she is as if, you know. So Urvashi could be our own a sadasad viveka buddhi. It is our chit shakti, which is veiled perhaps, you know. So he wants to make it more symbolic in a way. Uh, but let us not go into that depth of uh, symbolism and mysticism. Uh, I am uh, reciting one more uh, uh, poem by Ramdhari Sinadinkar, Urvashi. I studied it uh, for my BA. Uh, it's a very beautiful Dirgha Kavya, Urvashi. And how, you know, one art form inspires another. The basic Ururava Urvashi, it had the germs, the bija of art form. That's why Kalidasa got inspired and he created a beautiful drama of out of it, Vikram Urvashiyam. Kalidasa's Vikram Urvashiyam has inspired and motivated many a writers later on in different, different languages. Tagore's is one. Now here is Dinkar. Maratya Manav ki Vijay ka Turiya Urvashi apune samay ka surya hume. Pururava is saying this. Urvashi apune samay ka surya hume. Andha tamke bhal par pavak chalata hum. Badalon ke sis par syandan chalata hum. Syandan ka artha hai rath. Badalon ke shish par swarga lok mein avakash mein rath chalata hum. Par na jane baat kya hai. Par na jane baat kya hai. Indra ka ayud purush jo. झेल सकता है सिंह से बाहे मिलाकर खेल सकता है फूल के आगे फूल के आगे वही सहाय हो जाता शक्ति के रहते हुए निरुपाय हो जाता विद्ध हो जाता सहज बंकिम नयन के बाण से विद्ध हो जाता सहज बंकिम नयन के बाण से जीत लेती रूप सी नारी से मुस्कान से so, बहुत अच्छी कविता दिनकर जी ने पूरा दीर्घ काव्य लिखा है सो दिस इज हाउ वन आर्ट फॉर्म इंस्पायरिंग अनदर आर्टिस्ट रामधारी से दिनकर की अपनी कुछ खूबियां हैं बट स्टिल ही गॉट इंस्पिरेशन फ्रॉम कालिदास उर्वशी सो दिस इज द पात्र सौंदर्य ओके अनदर पात्र सौंदर्य आई वुड गिव एज द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल इज शकुंतला अगेन and uh, I am uh, quoting uh, Goethe, the German scholar of 18th century, who says, Wouldst thou the young year's blossoms and the fruits of its decline, and all by which the soul it charmed, enraptured, feasted, fed, wouldst thou the earth and heaven itself in one soul name combine? I name thee, O Shakuntala, and all at once it said. Where the heaven and the earth get combined, Prithvi or Akash ka milan jaha hota hai, wo shakuntala, wo shakuntala, I see all at once in you. Tumhe dekhta hoon to ye sab mujhe pratit hota hai. What a contribute, what a, what a homage, what a tribute Goite has paid, you know. So, a beautiful picture by Raja Ravi Verma. Again, you know, you just see the picture and you can, uh, you know, uh, relish it in different ways. How, what that picture speaks for you, you know. Darbhaan Kurena Charanakshata Itya Kande. This Ravi Verma, this is a painting which is done in the 18th century by King Ravi Verma of Keral of the Verma dynasty. And... Uh, he has been inspired by Kalidasa. Kalidasa's verse in Shakuntala, in second act. 
she had seen Shakuntala, I mean, she has seen Dushanta and she is also, you know, charmed by his robust body and his handsomeness and all. She has been brought up in the ashram for all these years. Hardly she has come across and interacted with any citizen, you know, city people. This is the first time. And uh, she is really, you know, enamored by his handsomeness. And uh, she wants to uh, find some pretext under which she can look back at him once more while departing. So, Darbhaan Kurena Charanaha Kshataha Iti. Shakuntala displays her feelings under the pretext of removing her garment, which is entangled in the branches of the tree. And she just pretends that, you know, uh, a thorn has pricked her foot. So she just lifts her, you know, she turns back, lifts her foot as if she's removing, uh, taking out that thorn, as if she is, you know, removing the entangled garment from the thorny bushes. And under that pretext, she casts another glance at him. So the bashful, inexperienced Mugdha, inexperienced hermit girl, unaware of such feelings, first time she is feeling it, finds some pretext to suggest her love for Dushan. So it is not saying, speaking, you know, but it is just suggesting through actions and what a wonderful masterpiece Raja Ravi Verma created through his painting. So the moment of this got freezed as if, you know, in the picture of King Ravi Verma. So this is the beauty. Now we come to one uh, Alankara. There is a, a figure of speech called Swabhavokti. So uh, Swabhavokti Alankara is there. And this is, uh, this is an example from uh, his very first drama, Kalidasa's very first drama called Malavi Kagni Mitram. Very first drama. He is an internship. He is doing his internship so to say, an amateur poet, not a matured poet uh, who composed Raghumausha, not a matured poet who composed Shakuntalam, but a very first Kriti, his very first drama. But the way he has described uh, Malavika, the princess, who is dancing and after the dance, she is resting. Now, if you have seen any dance recitals, and when the dancers elegantly pose, you know, one hand they keep, the left hand uh, they keep on their vest and the right hand is hanging exactly the same position, the dancer's position, Malavika is dancing and after that she is posing like that and that has been captured by Kalidasa and such postures have been frozen in our architecture in so many temples we have so many great sculptures of dancing yakshis and dancing ladies and one such sculpture i could find out from the net thanks to google swami so the exact description is given you know and the modern way uh, modern day dancers also use the same posture if you have seen a dance recital do observe it a perfect piece of standing posture of a dancer. And Kalidasa being a poet par excellence, he creates world visuals, pen pictures we say. So he has uh, written it with his pen, but it has created a picture. You can visualize it, you know. Uh, so Malavika is looking more beautiful while standing than dancing. That is what Agnimitra, the hero, you know, he comments, Nrittad asyaha sthitim atitaram kantam. Nrittad, better kantam, atitaram kantam. It is far more better than her dancing, what? Her standing posture, which is ruju ayata ardham, which is ruju, that is still, and ayatardha, lower part of her body is still. And the upper part of her body seems dynamic because her hand is let loose. We'll see that. Vamam sandhistimita valayam nyasya hastam nitambe. Vamam hastam nitambe nyasya. Keeping her left hand on her vest. Stimita valayam. 
and the kankana the bracelet which is she is wearing it is resting you know it is not moving kritva shama vitapasadrisham srasta muktam vitiyam and the second hand the right hand she has srastam she has hanging it she she is hanging it she has let it loose it looks like a shama vitap it looks like a, a slender creeper called shama okay पादांगुष्ठा लुलित कुसुमे कुट्टिमे पातिताक्षम कुट्टिम इज अ पेव फ्लोर विथ अ पेवर ब्लॉक्स और विथ द टाइल्स एंड इनलेड विथ मोजेक और यू नो द स्टोन और समथिंग लाइक दैट अ मोजेक टाइल्स एंड देर आर फ्लॉवर्स स्कैटर्ड देर एंड विथ हर टो she is scratching i mean she can't scratch the ground it is not a ground it's a paved floor of the dance hall sabhagriha uh, the nritya shala and she has cast her glance down why because she is you know playing with those flowers which are scattered on the dancing floor so what a beautiful pen picture kalidasa has created and this is a very picturesque description uh, which enables us to visualize the posture of malavika in front of our mental eyes so this is the alankara called swabhavokti and this swabhavokti uh, described in words creates a picture in front of us and it could, it was frozen in the form of such beautiful sculpture of the sculptors now some vichara saundarya vichara saundarya is some lofty thought you know in meghadoota for example uh, there is a beautiful description of neechaihi parvat the the mountain's name is neechaihi why because it is not very tall it is little shorter one bada parvat nahi thodi thoda uncha parvat hai okay नीचैहि आख्यम गिरिमधि वसे हे नाउ दिस दिस हैज अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल पोएटिक कांसेप्ट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट आई हैव जस्ट कोटेड अ कपलेट फ्रॉम दैट इट्स अ फोर लाइंड वर्स आई हैव कोटेड ओनली लास्ट टू लाइंस फ्रॉम दैट वर्स बट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दैट पोएटिक कांसेप्ट व्हिच इज हिडन इन दिस द थिंग इज यक्ष हैज सेंट द क्लाउड एज अ मैसेंजर ओके टू अलका वेयर हिज वाइफ इज स्टेइंग इन हिज होम he has seen the cloud on the ramagiri okay ramagiri is somewhere in uh, near ramkoot they say in maharashtra or it is ram chitrakoot uh, in madhya pradesh in uttar pradesh okay so from there the cloud has been sent across the himalayas but in between the cloud is taking rest on certain mountains so yaksha has carved out an uh, a perfect itinerary for the cloud where to go when to go where to stop and all that so on en route he tells the cloud to take rest on the mountain called neechaihi when the cloud is resting this is not an ordinary cloud this is a rain bearing cloud jatam vamshe bhuvan vidite pushkara vartakana a very great family of rain bearing clouds called pushkara and avartaka okay so it is filled with rain water so when the cloud goes and rest that means it showers the rain showers you know on the mountain what does it happen then after that showering of the water whatever wild fires are have erupted have emerged during the grishma ritu during the uh, grishma that is the summer season they get quenched and because they get quenched the mountain owes some gratitude to the cloud because the cloud has helped them cloud and mountain there is a relationship of friendship both are friends because they are meeting after a year last year the cloud was there to uh, resting and now after a year he is meeting so when you meet a friend after such a long time what happens you get goosebumps you get goosebumps on your body you get horripilation such a horrible word for romancha right but the parvata gets romancha and how does that romancha get revealed 
that gets revealed through the neep this is the kadamba flower you know this flower this this is the entire kadamba tree filled with flowers the close up of the flower is like this there are the spiked petals you know there are like spikes so the spikes are as if the hair standing on your body what a beautiful thought you can't even imagine you know to relish kalidasa we have to reach that height of imagination kalidasa has personified not only the cloud he has personified the mountain as well and mountain gets goosebumps after meeting his long awaited friend that is the cloud and that goosebumps those goosebumps are manifested through the blossoms of kadamba another thing kadamba puts forth blossoms at the advent of rainy season this is how the nature and the characters you know they get mingled in kalidasa's literature nature you cannot separate from kalidas kalidas ke vangmay mein मानव और निसर्ग प्रकृति का चित्रण इतना घुल मिल गया है कि उसको हम अलग नहीं कर सकते बिल्कुल अलगाव उसमें संभव नहीं है सो लॉफ्टी थॉट ऑफ इटर्नल फ्रेंडशिप एंड देर गोज अनदर कवि कल्पना बिहाइंड दैट यू नो व्हाई दे आर फ्रेंड्स व्हाई द क्लाउड्स क्लिंग टू द पीक ऑफ द माउंटेन यू नो बिकॉज इन ओल्ड एंड डेज इट इज सेड दैट द माउंटेन्स हैड विंग्स एंड दे कुड फ्लैक it was indra who cut off their wings now what happened to that cut off wings those cut off wings became clouds and therefore they come back to the body remembering their past connection with that body of mount and therefore they come and cling and rest on the peaks of the mountain bodies right so this is another very lofty uh kalpana and this we have in the puranas that you know uh mountains had wings and they used to fly and uh, cause problem to the people harass trouble to the people and therefore uh, indra was requested and indra cut down their wings with his vajra you know these are all the stories but how the puranic stories have been uh, beautifully embedded in poetry by kalidas another very nice uh, thing is like praya sarvo bhavati karuna vritti hi ardra antaratma one whose heart is you know antaratma whose inside is ardra that is voice he has to be compassionate see literally the cloud is ardra moist by because in its belly it has stored ample water okay the rain water so आर्द्र अंतरात्मा इज लिटरली ट्रू फॉर फॉर द क्लाउड बट द यक्ष हियर टेल्स हिम दैट ओ क्लाउड आई नो यू विल एम्पथाइज विथ मी यू विल हैव सिंपथी फॉर मी एंड यू विल लिसन टू मी एंड ओबे मी नॉट ओबे बट देन यू नो यू विल डू वॉट आई वॉन्ट यू टू डू गो टू माई वाइफ एंड गिव माई टाइडिंग्स टू हर एंड री एश्योर हर दैट ओनली फोर मंथ्स मोर नाउ Eight months have already passed, and after four months, your husband will come back and reunite you. So bear till then. It's only a few months now. So that is what the message he wants to uh, send, and he's sure that the cloud will listen to him because he is moist from within. So he will be moist with his feelings. He will have compassion and empathy and sympathy. for the fellows like yaksha because the cloud is accompanied by his consort that is the lightning vidyut but the yaksha is a bereaved fellow he has been separated from his wife so he will understand what lies what is the pain and suffering of separation you know only a lover can experience the suffering of separation and therefore yaksha you know uh, it's an emotional appeal to the cloud that i'm sure you will certainly listen to me because you are filled 
inside with water so emotionally also you will be you will melt at my uh, my sorrow my agony my separation so this is the vichara saundarya now a very beautiful uh, verse here from uh, megaduta again uh, one of my favorites in the uttara megha it is the 63rd verse uh, yaksha has told the cloud to go to the himalayas okay now himalayas is the is the nivasa sthan of lord shiva god shiva and shiva is you know like uh, always staying on the mountains and uh, uh, like a rough and tough life for him but parvati uma gauri she is a princess she is a princess she is not uh, exposed to the hardships now after marrying shiva she will take her for a walk you know on the rough terrain of the himalayas there are bahut uch 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 niche hai so upar chadna padta hai there are no steps and all so how to climb you know so he has imagined a picture here this is also beautiful swabhavokti and full of rasa and full of dhvani this is a very nice narma shringar here just imagine shiva and parvati are going for a for an evening walk hand in hand okay but shiva's hand he wears you know serpent bracelets on his wrist and parvati abhors that that sight of so she can't wear and therefore shambhu what he does for the wife's sake she should not get afraid you know after all his beloved gauri and therefore he keeps aside his bracelet of the serpent hitva tasmin bhujagavalayam bhujagavalayu the bracelet of the serpents hitva he keeps it aside shambhuna datta hasta he gives his hand to parvati so that it will be easy for her to climb up krida shaile for shiva himalaya is krida shaile it's like a pleasure mountain yadi cha vichare padachare na gauri if on foot they are going they are not in the vimana they are going for a walk on foot shambhu holding holding her hand and because she is holding his hand he has removed that bhujagavalaya for her now comes the role of the cloud yaksha tells him you have water mass in your belly in your body and you are such a great officer of indra you can assume any form which you like because you know jatam vamshe bhuvan vidite pushkara vartakana and therefore what you do is that watery mass you convert it into ice stambhita antar jalogha the jalogha the streams of water you know in your belly stambhita you solidify them you make them you turn them into ice and then how the cloud looks you know normally how do we draw a cloud like a horizontal line first and then like these rounds 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 right this is how we draw clouds so this this cloud you know at every joint there is a joint on all these curves there is a joint and if this cloud is you know like a straight line straight line you sleep on the slopes of the mountain okay you keep the horizontal straight line on the slopes of the mountain that's why i have shown here the slope and then this parva okay all the joints because the water is has become solid they will serve as steps for gauri to climb up सोपानत्वं कुरु मणितटारोहणाय अग्रयामि सोपानत्वं सोपान इज अ स्टेयरकेस सोपान इज सीढी सो सीढी चढ़के जाएगी वो बिकॉज इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर हर शी इज कोमलांगी शी इज सो ब्यूटिफुल सो डेलिकेट सो टेंडर नॉट रफ एंड टफ एंड रोबस्ट लाइक शिव यु नो एंड देर फॉर शी नीड्स दैट डेलिकेट a treatment for her climbing the climbing the mountain sopanatvam kuru manitata rohanaya agrayami so this is the height of uh, kalidas's imaginative uh, pratibha 
and what beautiful shringara rasa is there and so many hidden meanings are there one meaning could be you know this is the dhvani this is the dhvani dhvani is a very subjective feeling it goes beyond the rasa it is a suggested meaning when yaksha tells megha the cloud to to sleep on the on the slopes of the mountain that is you know you for uh, uh, you are an officer of indra and you can take any form and this and that you just lie down at the feet of jagatah pitarau arvati parameshwar so that on your body the parents of the world the eternal parents of the world will set their feet kitni adbhut kalpana hai apne aap ko bichha do unke kadmon tale unke pairon tale kitni dhanyata paoge aap your life will be like kritartha yathartha kritakritya what more do you want sarthakatva you have lived your life if the lord of the lords adi dev mahadev trades upon you walks upon you and that jagadamba sakshat jagadambika mata parvati she walks and she she uses your body as steps to go up what more delight can you have what a beautiful dhvani what a beautiful suggestion and therefore i said this is the best verse you know uh, which is filled with rasa with bhav with alankara with dhvani and the creativity the height of creativity of kalidasa prakritik saundarya again there are so many very beautiful examples are there i have quoted i have given a few every picture here which i have taken is not just a, a picture taken from google of course i have taken them from google but every picture has a story in either shakuntala or meghaduta every picture has a story every picture has a verse behind it i am afraid i won't be able to explain everything uh because ritul told me it will be 45 to 50 minutes stop so 5 10 minutes i will explain and then i think you can go to the original and read for yourself the beautiful verses uh, the pen pictures of kalidas you see here the 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 deer and the and the doe this is a doe and this is the deer the horned one you know this is a very favorite image of kalidas it occurs in kumara sambhava one of his poetry is the epic poems as well as in shakuntala the concept is this that when the doe wants to scratch her eye there is some you know khujli aa rahi hai usko aankh mein she wants to scratch her all these are personified deer doesn't just remain a deer it becomes a person deer and the doe are in love with each other they make a pair okay so the doe wants to scratch where she would scratch she can scratch on the rough bark of the tree but that will hurt her delicate eye she is scratching her eye on the horns of the deer can you imagine horns will be as sharp as pointed as a spear as an arrow if the deer moves a little bit her eye will get ruptured and damaged see the level of confidence she has in him standing still and he ab har nishtha har loyalty towards him and stands still without moving till she finishes scratching of her eye this is the nishtha this is the this is the the trust you must have in your companion in your partner so this is the uh, picture which is given in kumara sambhava also in the shakuntala this picture is the bhramara and a flower a mandara pushpa and a doomed mandara pushpa will naturally have a bhramara black bees hovering around it it doesn't require trumpeting yes i am here come here you know 
the very fragrance of that flower will attract the black beads towards it so similarly shakuntala is like a full bloomed flower sometimes she is compared with the lotus sometimes with the mandar flower and dushyanta is as if a bee now dushyanta being called a bee is uh, throughout his kalidasa's plays throughout shakuntala i must say b plays an important role b plays an important role in the first act when he sees her for the first time aho madhuramasam darshanam and when the b is hovering around her and you know she is not able to ward it off you know by hands and her friends mockingly said uh, why don't you call dushyanta he is ruler of our territory you know you call him to save you not knowing that dushyanta is really hiding behind the bushes there you know so these are very ironic dramatic ironies are there and very subtle statements and dushyanta is carried out by her natural beauty sarasija manuvidham shaivale nati ramyam etc you know she is not she has not decorated herself with any silk cloths and no makeup and this and that but it's a rustic beauty which attracts his mind so he is like a bee and in the fifth act again you know his own wife hausapadika accuses him to be a bee so bee is as good as a character in shakuntala now this is the hausamithuna this again is a picture uh, created by a verse in the sixth act of shakuntala karya sai katali na hausamithuna sroto vaha malini you know malini river is flowing and on the banks of the river this house a couple the house a couple is reclining without any fear you know they are so assured that nobody is going to disturb them so he wants to create dushyanta wants to create a picture like that you know karya sai katalina sai katalina house mithuna so this is a very beautiful picture of that then this picture uh, reminds me of you know yaksha telling uh, uh, the cloud about his house and there is indra neela manimaya parvata the krida shaila and uh, the very body of the megh reminds him of the krida shaila outside his house this is a like uh, uh, a vapi you know uh, which is filled with lotuses filled with lotuses and uh, he he describes to yaksha you know he describes to the cloud how to identify my house and he gives him so many landmarks so some of these landmarks are these beautiful uh, pen pictures i should say you know he says that when you go to the alakanagari you can easily identify a very tall structure which is the kubera's house because kubera is the king of alaka and then uh, then uh, to the north of kubera's house tatragaram dhanapati griha duttarena asmadeyam to the north of dhanapati griha kubera is our house not my house our house that is me and my wife together are in the house okay so that sense of belonging and then he gives there is a uh, charu torana is there then that uh you know, made by this hema uh, kamalaihi chinna this vapi and the uh, indra neela manimaya mountain and all that and then at the back you know and the backyard there is a spatika shila a marble and on that marble stone there is a kanchani vasa yashti a golden stick a golden pillar on that golden pillar every evening oh cloud a peacock comes and rests and my wife she just claps by clapping her uh, her bracelets which have little little you know uh, what you can say bells little binglet uh, like jingling the jingling sound along with the clapping sound and the mayur uh, dances at her clapping that is our house so please don't go to anybody's house go to this house and then convey my message you know so very beautiful picture so these are all like the nature coming alive in kalidasa's krithis in kalidasa's compositions 
So what Khalil Gibran said once, you know, beauty is not in the face. Beauty is a light in the heart. So it is, if you can't visualize, you know, you lose the charm of it. So that light inwards has to enlighten those uh, what inanimate words and create a live picture out of that. So this is what Kalidas uh, gives us. Uh, so I think I have taken enough time. Uh, it's almost five. And uh, I mean, this is a too short a time for uh, dealing with uh, aesthetics and Kalidasa. But still, I tried to give samples from uh, all genres, from all his works. Uh, let it be Malavika, Vikramur, Vashiya, Meghaduta, Kalidasa, Shakuntala, Kumara Sambhava and all. So these are some of the readings, you know, uh, which uh, one can uh, go, uh, go across and go through. So thank you, Ritul, and thank you, Indus University, for this wonderful opportunity. And thank you, one and all. Are you? Uh, as as you're explaining, it comes to my mind that the understanding of uh, the text would come naturally if you uh, know Sanskrit. So how yes. important it is to learn this language first and then go on to read these works because there are translations available, but uh, I feel that there are some non translations So uh, your take on it. Yeah, uh, two things here. Uh, translations help us to a certain extent. Uh, coincidentally, in CVV, in the university now, Chinmay University, we are having a translation workshop right from today. It's a three days workshop and uh, there are some untranslatables, you know. The emotions can't be translated. The words can be translated. And again, it depends much on the translator, whether he translates the words or the meaning. It could be Shabdanuvada or Bhavanuvada. Shabdanuvada, you know, you take help of thesaurus, you take help of lexicons, dictionaries and all, and find out a word, you know, what does this mean in English? What does this Sanskrit word mean in Hindi or Marathi or Gujarati or Bangla? And do the translation. It is just putting word besides another word. But sometimes the words just don't carry that feeling, that meaning which is there in Sanskrit. Okay. And therefore, uh, when, uh, for example, uh, there is a word for the cloud which is used as uh, payoda priyayaha, you know, in the very first two, three verses, uh, yaksha addresses, I mean, Kalidasa addresses the cloud as payoda. Payoda is a cloud. I mean, you take the lexical meaning, it's, it means a cloud. But paya also means milk. Paya doesn't merely milk, or doesn't merely mean water. It also means milk. And therefore, payoda is literally one who gives milk or one who gives water. Now, when you translate it as cloud, it means the water giving entity. But while addressing the cloud as payoda, what is the dhvani, what is the suggested meaning is as milk is nourishing, as milk is supporting, you know. Similarly, you be my support. I am dying now. Kanaka valaya bhraushadikta prakoshtaha. He has become so crucial, so emaciated, you know, because of the separation. Love in separation has caused him uh, his health. And therefore, he has become, he has reduced. Huh? So if this continues for some more time, he may not be there. And he's afraid that his wife, whose, whose life is hanging on his well-being, on hearing his well-being, she should be given that right message. So, oh cloud, you are not just giving the water. You are the giver of very life. You are giving life to me. And you will be giving the life to my dear wife. Sandesham me haradhanapati prodha vishleshitasya. And there he addresses him as Priya Payoda. So this is, I mean, how can you translate this? All these meanings which I uh, told you now, this can't be a part of translation. Now for the word like... Uh, uh, any anything for a lotus, we have only one word in English, L-O-T, U-S, lotus. At the most, you will call it water lily. <laughs> I mean, a small Padma, you can call 
water lily but see the the richness of sanskrit so many words it has like if you say shatapatra in malavika agnimitram it is like aruna shatapatram eva te charanah your food the reddish food is like the red shatapatra shatapatra having hundreds of petals now how can you translate shatapatra in english so you will translate it as mere lotus so what i mean to say is though translations help you because they transport from one language source language to target language of course the purport gets transferred and transported but not the exact nuances and the intricacies of the semantics of it so how can you translate that semantics that meaning for example jayadeva's geeta govinda he uses such you know very what you can say a very tender and uh, alliterative words you can't find such alliterations in english sorry to say so but you can't find it so what but still translators have done a great job and they have helped us because those who cannot read sanskrit and cannot relish it in original sanskrit at least have an opportunity to read and relish it through other languages if they were not there then the literature would have not touched millions of hearts which has done it now <laughs> so it has its own uh, benefits and merits and demerits i should say